man, I'm just 21 and I'm going to die in a fucking tin can in the desert of Utah. Just had an accident. The guy next to you died. You're just realizing that life can be over tomorrow. Welcome to a new episode of the Uncomfortably Honest podcast. I'm your host, Nikki, and today's guest is me, moi, myself. <laughs> so today I want to just talk a little bit about why I started the Uncomfortably Honest podcast in the first place. I also want to share a little bit about me and why I'm doing this. Why am I so fascinated about the freedom lifestyle and talking to women who live differently and just uncovering topics that nobody really wants to talk about. Let me start by introducing myself. So I'm Nikki, my real name is actually Nicole, but I love the name Nikki that I actually got when I lived in Bali, more on that later. And currently I live in Denmark, I'm 38 years old, I live together with my partner Jens, and we just bought a farm in Denmark. <laughs> and we are planning on doing rebuilding it so it has a permaculture garden we already have like 12 chickens and two pigs and a dog and we also want to make this to a beautiful retreat place so the house itself is 270 years old and the property is just surrounded by beautiful nature and we have our own little forest and yeah we just want to make this place into a little sanctuary where you can come and just completely relax and be yourself and do yoga and all sorts of kind of stuff. Um, but more on that later. So I love traveling. I always been a freedom seeker at heart and I never wanted to live a conventional life. I always had the feeling of this can't be it. There must be more to life than this, right? Um, I just saw my friends and uh, striving for you know, this house, children, job, education kind of life. And I just knew that mm, I wanted something else in my life. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do because, you know, I just grew up in a little village um, in Denmark here and not really presented by with anything creative. My parents both had just quite normal jobs and we just lived a quite normal life, like in a little village and I was like mm. yeah anyhow so the curiosity always followed me around and uh, when I was around 21 I decided um, okay the story is actually funny I had a, a boyfriend back then and we we've been I think we were together for five years or something like that when we decided that we were not really growing together anymore but we were growing very separately and we wanted different lives and of course because we were so young right How, you know anyways so I decided to buy a trip to America and um, I went on a trip uh, half years later the story is quite funny because you know I split up with my boyfriend that that day and I got really drunk <laughs> and then I ordered I went online and just I want to travel because he didn't want to travel, but I wanted to travel. So anyways, me drunk, <laughs> uh, ordered this uh, adventure trip from San Francisco. No, from Miami to San Francisco. And um, yeah, when I woke up the next morning, I was like, oh shit, <laughs> I just bought tickets. And half a year later, I was off to America and off to the adventure of my life, I would say. And this trip completely changed my life. Um, um, because we were meant to travel for one month from, from Miami to San Francisco, but on the halfway in Utah, the bus we were traveling in. So this was a bus full of young people from all over the world. Uh, and we met up in Miami and blah, blah, blah. And we were traveling together, adventure trip, tents, mountains. It was so cool. It was so cool. I was just 21. It was the coolest thing ever. Anyways. We met halfway through the trip and we are in Utah and then um, the back tire of the um, bus explodes and we have a rollover accident in the middle of the, in the middle of the pampas I would say, but in the middle of the desert in Utah. And it was a horrible accident and one of the, the guy next to me died and one of many of the other ones got badly injured, me myself also 
Um, yeah, and I just remember before, just before the bus was hitting the road for the first time with the side windows, I was thinking, oh my fucking God, if this is it, if I'm dying now, I didn't have anything out of life. And it was as time was standing still, right? I felt like, man, I'm just 21 and I'm going to die in a fucking tin can in the desert of Utah. Not really in experience anything, right? And luckily, <laughs> I'm here. I survived. And what happened after that was a roller coaster of too much alcohol, drinking, not understanding what was happening with me, too many sleeping pills, too many depression pills, too many of anything, because suddenly you're 20 years old, just had an accident, the guy next to you died. And you're just thinking, you're just realizing that life can be over tomorrow. That fucks with your mind, I just tell you that. And um, yeah, so back in Denmark, really trying to figuring out life, you know, and I couldn't remember, oh yeah, that is me, <laughs> it's funny, couldn't remember anything. So I lost my short time memory for, I think for three years or something and I, I was like Dory, it's like, who are you, you know, the in uh, the movie Nemo. Um, anyway, so, so the first, okay, so back in Denmark, first month or so, I, I was you know, dealing with all this stuff, figuring out what happened to me, my arm was ripped open, I had a major brain injury and just figuring all this out and coming back to normal life and and just experience how my, first of all, some of my better friends was dealing with this. I lost some friends actually because of it as well. They couldn't deal with the pain, they couldn't deal with that I was now changed and not, you know, this pretending happy chuk anymore. And um, yeah, a couple of months go by and I feel this roller coaster of feelings from one minute to the other. I'm just depressed and then I'm happy and I went to the doctors and then described me with depression pills and then the shit hit the fan from there. Um, I become like numbed out for six months of these on these pills and still not understanding anything. It's like you know, really have to, it's this feeling if hunting me if life could just be over tomorrow and and what now right and then still coming back to your normal society and, and you don't really get any help yes i got a psychologist and everything but what did that only help to imprint the fear even more in me because we constantly was just talking about um the accident instead of like figuring out what now and I think six months went by and my friend said to me, I don't recognize you anymore. This is not the real Nikki. And I'm like, oh yeah, I just changed so much. I was just numbed out by these pills and taking all these sleeping pills as well. And anyways, my condition actually just worsened. I got really into drinking as well and got into not, not bad people, but just people also who were dealing with, you know, mental stuff because of the childhoods and stuff like that. So they were drinking too. So we were one big crowd of drinkers. Two years in, two years after the accident, I had a complete breakdown. I came home really drunk from the town. And that night I woke up and a clear voice said to me, you have to move to Bali. And I was like, okay, I'm doing that. So the next morning I, I, um, yeah, I decided I'm going to move to Bali because this voice of mine, the voice I heard that night was just so full of, was so true. It was just so intense and I knew I had to follow this. And so I quit my apartment, I quit my job and everything. And three weeks later I was in Bali and I was finally in a place where I could start all over. I could create who I wanted to be or I could create who I was deeply inside because I do believe that society norms and everything that that we learn from our parents in school is just masking up 
what who we really are inside the true essence of ourselves i think it's just layers and layers upon layers from society telling you who you should be and should become and what is right and what is wrong and you just come so far away from the essence of yourself that yeah what you have to do later in life is unpeeling the layers so you know who you truly are inside anyway it's landed in bali and for the first time in my life there was actually a new way of thinking there was people there who were living so differently and it just blew my mind that this was actually possible to live so differently and also not only the Balinese but also the people who were living there the experts the the healers and then I started my healing journey in Bali where I went from one healer to another to learn how to heal myself from the inside out getting a better understanding what happened to me and then I will say you know because I was working on, on all the stuff with the the with the accident by the way by here I actually also went cold turkey so I went off all my pills I don't want to recommend that to anybody and I went cold turkey and alcohol as well so I was completely sober when I was in Bali but anyway so learning here to heal from the inside out so I learned more and more about all you know even food you know how important gut health and food is for your depression you have no idea and that was not mentioned once when I went to the doctors in Denmark. I was just keep on smoking cigarettes, eating, you know, I was 21. What do you eat when you're 21, right? Junk food and stuff and and not understanding when you have a brain damage. And I was also suffering from PTSD and yeah, the brain damage and knowing that you actually have to eat quite healthy and f- you know good with fatty fish and stuff like that to heal your brain again nobody tells you this shit so let me wrap this up being in bali <laughs> was definitely um, a life changer for me and also just getting away from my normal tribe at home and getting away from everything i knew because when you want to change things up in life when you want to change your life you need to stop doing what brought you this this life in the first place right with if this makes sense so if you do a certain thing every day you know the, if you say for instance you ate cake every day this would will this will lead to you at one point getting fat from this so you need to change your habits and your routines if you want a different outcome right if you want a different life you need to do things differently and for me taking the plane to bali leaving all the shit behind leave my parents behind my friends and all the crowd i knew for 21 years was that no it was i was 24 when i moved there but so for 24 years it was the best thing in the world i could just reinvent myself really figuring out who the fuck is nikki from the inside out and um yeah best thing ever and i want to and this is why <laughs> this is we coming to why i then wanted to start this podcast as well because i got fascinated by women i got fascinated by strong women who dare to live differently who to dare to travel with the kids around the world who dare to move to bali and live there who dare to open their own businesses become healers become yoga teachers become i don't know i met a woman who had took his uh, husband of course and lived in thailand half a year she was from she is from Ireland and I have an interview upcoming with her as well and yeah and the other half they were living on the boat with two kids amazing there's so many possibilities out there and I was like oh my god why is nobody telling me about that you can actually choose to live the life you want and not just you know get a fucking house and a car and two kids and a depressed husband why you can actually create a life you love and so fascinated by these women i actually started my first interviews which was called something different back then but i started my first interviews when we me and my partner lived in thailand for six months and i was interviewing women there and i was fascinated by how yeah first of all how they live differently but also how they heal differently 
like I had one who had a broken back and she didn't get a surgery. She actually healed herself with her thoughts and bone broth. Well, there's more to the story. You can listen to it, that interview when that's coming up. So, wow, there was just this amazement that I felt like somebody was hitting a world back then for me. Like I didn't know that this was existing out there, that you could live in a van or travel the world full time or you could just buy a property in Bali or in Thailand and build yourself a cafe there. I was I was mind blown. And um yeah, so the fascination become became interviewing women and talking about this stuff, but also the healing part because I felt so light to when it came to understanding myself and becoming aware of my shadow sides and becoming aware of how you properly heal from the inside out with food, nutrition, extra vitamins, yoga, movement, meditation, blah, blah, blah. And I met the most incredible people. And one of them was Bobby. And I'm going to tell the story. I tell this story so many times. Um was uh, I was suffering from candida and um, so one of my friends in Bali told me to go to her and so she put needles in me with some I don't know some incense stuff so it was burning to to get rid of this candida and I had to go there a few times and was laying there on her bed while she was going around in her little room full of, full of medicine stuff and it was so cool and she was so cool and I was complaining about my life, right? Complaining about my parents, complaining about the accident and how sorry I felt for myself. I was so much in victimhood here. And um, she turned to me and asked me, how old are you? I'm 24. And she was like, wow, Nikki, it is time to take responsibility for your life. You need to actually pull your finger out of your butt and look yourself in the mirror and take responsibility. I know it's hard to hear those words, but yes, until we are like 18 or 16 or something like that, we are still children and we are under the care of our parents. And it's hard to kind of take responsibility for our lives because we are under, yeah, we need to listen to our parents, right? <laughs> but then at one point, you get you become an adult and, and you have to take responsibility for your actions and you have to clean up your act and you have to get your shit together and cannot stay in victim mode. And when I heard that, I went home on my motorbike that day thinking, shit, I didn't know that. I actually didn't know that you, you can't walk for life, keep on complaining about that it's everybody else's fault why you feel the way you do or why your life turned out the way you did because you at one point have to grow up and deal with this shit even though if you had a shitty childhood shitty shit stuff happened to you at one point there's two roads you have to decide which one to go you can either go down complaining about everything and blaming your life on everybody else or you can take the road of self-discovery i would call it where you take one step at a time understanding yourself so you don't repeat your patterns and fuck up your own children um and you don't do that yourself right you don't you don't have to do go this work by yourself and this is why you want the healers to stand on the side of the road and say you know what here's a little tip or here's a little key here's the next key or here's the next clue on your map how you rediscover yourself how do you figure out how you want to live your life how you want to feel about yourself what partner you want what life you want and you get those clues and you're figuring out along the way where where you want to go and who you want to become right or who you are truly inside i think that's much better and by that i want to say something that i heard um I'm going to play this for you, but I heard this from Elizabeth, Elizabeth Gilbert, but I'm, because I'm quite inspired by her, because I loved her books and I love her humor. And it's not all about eat, pray, love, but I, because that was in Bali as well, right? And that's what not, that was also not why I was there. I didn't know about her before I actually arrived in Bali. Anyways, 
So I always also felt that I could never figure out my passion of what I really enjoyed in life. After pulling back all the layers of the shit show with the accident, I figured, you know, I also like the whole childhood trauma stuff came up and was like, oh my God, I thought I was finished with this shit. But anyways, on the sideline, I was also working on who am I? What do I want to do with my life, right? And I, because I, this question I never could answer. My my girlfriends in the school always said, I want to be a nurse. I, you know, I want to be a, 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 a veterinarian. Or they knew what they wanted to be and become. And I was always so jealous. But I had never, I had, I didn't have a direction in my life. I, I've always, you know, was thinking there was so much stuff stuff that was so interesting like the the event planner thing and I was a waitress when I was younger and I thought that kind of aspect of it was quite fascinating working with people I wanted to also be a hairdresser at one point and but I I always got quickly bored with my the jobs <laughs> I was pursuing um no oh, anyways back to Elizabeth Gilbert I was she was um I'm just gonna play this and it took me such a hard, long time to figure this, find this clip where she's talking about the hum- hummingbird uh, effect. So first, well, it's all about actually if you're not if you're not a one passion person, you know, where you I know I want to be a writer, or I know I'm gonna pick all my life, or I'm gonna take care of animals, but but you like just don't know what you want to do you don't know what your passion is and then she's saying then you are a hummingbird and hum- because hummingbirds they fly from one place to another to to collect honey right um so they go to the forest then they go to the fields and they 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 fly from one spot to the next spot and in the end you can see a whole pattern of things because they actually follow their curiosity and i thought that was so releasing Rele- that was so relieving because that is how i felt i never felt like i fit in i never felt like this is my passion i want to do this i always felt like oh this is interesting no oh this herbs i love herbs menstrual cycle awareness yoga you know planting my own garden and this and this also became my whole philosophy like following your curiosity but let me just play this so this makes more sense for you it was so hard to find the clip. See, the world is divided into two kinds of people. There are the jackhammers and there are the hummingbirds. Jackhammers are people like me. You know, you put a passion in our hands and we're just like... <laughs> and we don't look up and we don't veer and we don't... We're just like what it, we're focused on that till the end of time. And it's efficient. You get a lot done. But we tend to be obsessive and fundamentalist and sometimes a little difficult and loud. Hummingbirds... <coughs> spend their lives doing it very differently. They move from tree to tree, from flower to flower, from field to field, trying this, trying that. And two things happen. They create incredibly rich, complex lives for themselves. And they also end up cross-pollinating the world. That is the service that you do if you are a hummingbird person. Because you bring an idea from here to over here where you learn something else and you weave it in and then you take it here to the next thing you do so that your perspective ends up keeping the entire culture aerated and mixed up and open to the new and fresh. And if that is how you are constructed by your divine maker, then that is how we need you to be. You just keep doing that. That is what the path is that you're supposed to lead. And I'll give you the trick. Here's the magical thing. If you do that, if you're willing to just release yourself from the pressure and the anxiety surrounded by passion, and you just humbly and faithfully continue to follow the trail of the hummingbird path, going here, going here, going here, going here, and you just trust it, one of these days you just might look up and realize, oh my word, I am exactly where I'm meant to be. I'm with the people I'm supposed to be with, I'm doing the work I'm supposed to be doing, I'm in the city I'm supposed to be living with, my family looks the way it is, in other words, If you can let go of passion and follow your curiosity, your curiosity just might lead you to your passion. What? And when when I heard this interview the first time, I don't know, you can't find the whole interview anymore. I don't know what happened to it. I think Oprah owns it or something like that. But I will play this clip for you. And she explained it so much better. But when I was hearing that, I was like, yes, I'm that one. I'm so curious about the world and I think I am this way because I never were allowed to fully express who I was 
from the get go on, right? You you when you are a child of of not a dysfunctional parents, uh, the school it depends on what school you're going to or where where you grew up, right? It's often you made wrong for what you feel think is right. You made wrong for even crying. Uh, you just make wrong for everything, and then you you kind of getting a hard time understanding who you really are from the inside out because you just covered up in other people's expectations and what they want you to be so anyways i hope this clip really can help you because it really helped me a long way and um so this brings me back to i think this is coming together so well this brings me back to my passion for finding the truth and live it right and why i wanted to interview all these women and why i'm still doing it because i think for me i wanted to create a place for women where they can be a hummingbird in you know they can fly from interview to interview i kind of always wanted just to bring bali and the opportunities i had there back to to, to the world the western world because I got to experience that. I got to jump from one tree to one flower to the next one to one healer to the next one and gather all this knowledge and understand so I could understand myself better and understand where I want to go. And this became my life philosophy. I never want to live the same life or the same year again and again. I always want to follow my my curiosity and I don't want to be afraid of shifting gears. So so what so what I did I lived three years in in Bali and then I when I on on my travels home I met my 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 Jens my husband uh, who we've been together for twelve years now and we st- we moved back to Denmark and we lived there right and I was like oh God I can't live here so we traveled back to Asia and we traveled then for seven years we bought a van because we were curious about that lived in that for four years and now we are exploring farm life and I always want to be curious and and I think it's so never being too afraid to let go of of stuff it's just stuff right never being too afraid of letting go of people that doesn't serve you any longer what do you want to do? What do you want to do with your life? And yeah, I just feel like that's been my biggest biggest passion in life is freedom and creating a life that, that truly aligns with who I am from the inside out. And I want to inspire other people to do the same. Because not only that, but also, yeah, I want to inspire people to do the same. Because I think there's so many other, so many opportunities to both heal and live differently, and we're not presented it. And this also comes in with the whole menstrual cycle awareness I just stumbled upon a couple of years ago. It's like, whoa, this is travel for itself, right? Like h- how we are actually not meant. So the whole world is built for man. It's and and we so the man's hormones are like the rising sun you know it rises in the morning it peaks at midday and then starts to climb but a woman is like the moon and we don't have like the same energy levels all through the through the month right because we're different we have like four seasons inside of us like the moon like 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 nature and discovering that also completely changed my life and i'm so passionate that's one of my biggest passions right now and that's what it opened up to me following my curiosity and I wanted to bring that into the podcast I wanted to just tell about my discoveries and I wanted to bring women in I met along the way who also dare to move out of society's boring norms and do it differently another thing that I met in Bali was these women's circles where you where we were meeting up uh, every friday and we were sitting in the circle in yoga barn and emily was leading the circles and so it's about sitting together with women and there's a theme of the theme of the night presented it could be about menstrual cycle it could be about not feeling good enough and then you get like 10 minutes or so where you write down the answer to the questions and then you present it to the women in the group 
and the rules oh, it's not rules but it's just guidelines is that none of the other women are allowed to interrupt you say anything or even come and comfort you if you should cry so you sit with yourself you sit and people are actually listening to you and you sit there and you have the full of attention attention of 20 to 30 people or something like that that was the first time i recognized i'm not the only one that is fucking struggling here in this world <laughs> shit this is i thought because i've been who lift your hand if you ever felt like you're the only one feeling a certain way though you're the only one that's depressed you're the only one that feels like life is over and you want to jump from a bridge and you feel you know you're so depressed or you're so full of anxiety or you just hate your life or whatever or I don't know you had an abortion or you had a mis miscarriage or whatever it could be and then you sit in a women's circle and they start sharing and you're not alone anymore and I was thinking also sitting there thinking what the fuck why are we not sharing this shit with each other why because I didn't know you felt this way if I knew you were feeling this way and you were like 10 steps ahead of me maybe you could have given me some of the tools so I it would not take me fucking 10 years to kind of heal right and and that's what we used to do we don't we we are so separated we always live in the same age group you know we we together with your the the year you're born that's the people you're friends with it can vary of course <laughs> But we in 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 for, I can only say for Denmark, but we are never really surrounded by the other age group, like older women, younger women, so we can learn from each other. We don't sit in a circle and talk about stuff. So I can learn from grandma, and she can learn from me. And this is also why the whole menstrual cycle awareness came in. It's like oh, so many things. Why didn't people tell me about it? Why didn't people tell me? Like when you are on the pill, you can actually suffering from depression. It can cause depression. It can cause eating disorders. And you are not having a real bleed on the pill. I'm so, what? Yeah. So that is also why I wanted to bring all these brilliant women. Because they are finally opening up. Uncomfortably honest podcast, right? They are finally opening up about what the fuck hurts inside of us. Because you, I promise you, no matter what, you never know. You're not alone. You're not the only one experienced this. And I can tell you this. It's going to get a little personal now. But two years, uh, two years, one and a half years ago, I got pregnant. And um, yeah, me and Jens were like quite excited um, because, yeah, I hadn't been pregnant before. And um, yeah, that was the first time. And uh, we were in Portugal. We were living in the van at this time and this point. And um so we are finally finding a gynecologist, I think it's called, and that spoke English. And we were going to the first scan in the 12 weeks. And when he scanned it, um, the only the sac had developed with a with a tiny this, but there was nothing inside. Uh, it has like a there's a word for it. I don't remember it now. But anyway, so he said like within the next few days you will have a miscarriage or abortion no yeah miscarriage and yeah so as predicted two days after i started bleeding and then yeah <laughs> i had a miscarriage in the fucking middle of the van we were having tacos i was getting contractions and for one hour in the van at a campsite i had my miscarriage and it was so painful, it was so disturbing, and it was so powerful at the same time because I, I felt like, whoa, wow, the woman's body is so, it's so incredible because I was just tuning in, listening to my body, and everything went well, you know, the whole thing came out and everything, and anyways, to my point is with this, I don't want to paint any pictures here, but my point is, when then I opened up about my miscarriage, every woman, almost every woman on this campground had one, right? Had experienced this. And, and then they had healthy children afterwards. And I also, I knew also, by the way, that I think it's like three out of five women have miscarriage 
miscarriages because either they don't know it because it's just a heavy bleed or you know they have it in the, in the later in the 11th or 12th week but it's quite normal for the first, if you're pregnant for the first time because your body is getting ready to to get used to it and also it's like it's the body and it decides if there's something wrong with that egg or that ch child it will release it right it, we don't so what i want to say here even though it hurts for many women and i know that i don't want to put that down but it's normal the thing it was like it 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 actually turns out to be every third no three out of five women i experienced this but nobody talks about this openly and and then it became clear to me again we need to talk we need to sit down and talk we need to bring this to the table and i went to also um, I took an education in, in women's health and in menstrual cycle awareness uh, the years the years of corona and we're in a group of women who dared to open up and on uh, so so many of them had miscarriage right and told their stories and we cried and we healed and we went through these emotions together and when when you're not the only one it's less hard to carry and yeah again that's why i wanted you to i wanted to i want to do this i want to create a place for women where we can come together and share and heal and understand that there's nothing wrong with us okay there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing that needs to be fixed we just need to understand and come back to the core of yourself and then just unpeel the layers of society's expectations of you <laughs> and if we realign with nature and the wisdom and spirit of her we we heal instead of working against what's natural for us yeah so this is why i started the podcast and um, i really hope you get a lot out of it because this is so dear to my heart and i know the women i'm interviewing also it's very precious to them to open up and actually talk about what hurts them i want to create this space this platform for women to come and hear different ways of healing different ways of living and so you can pick and choose whatever feels true to you and your heart right it's i want to give you that uh, that little tip is does this resonate with you does this spike a certain kind of curiosity inside of you then go with it but don't stick with it if it doesn't feel good any longer right if you you just need a little portion of that over here and a little portion of this over here like a little bit of meditation a little bit of yoga or you're trying to become vegan for a while and then you don't think that is the right thing for you anymore always know that you can pivot and do something different you don't have to stick to things just because you'll be 40 years in the job <laughs> then you're a good girl no no we just have this life we just have this one life try everything on that you want to try on don't hold yourself back um not at all okay and so when you first of all i want to say when you start this journey of healing yourself and following if you become a hummingbird and start following your curiosity um it can get lonely so you have to get used to getting lonely i was i i call it in the between space <laughs> because when you because you you used to be a certain person i used to sit in bars and drink and smoke cigarettes and i loved it <laughs> i loved my friends around them they were nice they were beautiful humans and we were playing games and stuff and then you take the decision i want to change i want something different i know that i wanted to probably go in that direction i always recommend travel but i want to go in that direction 
and you ask your friends back here do you want to come and they say no i want to stay drinking and he's like okay see you later then and then you go in that direction and then you're like oh but i i don't have anybody here yet that actually because i don't know my own interest i don't know where i want to go and what i want to play with and what i want to do so you become a no man's land it's like for a while you will be somewhere where you can't talk to your old friends anymore because they don't understand your decision but you also don't have any new ones because you don't know where to fit am i gonna be a surfer dude in in thailand or in hawaii or am i am i more like a spiritual teacher that will want to you know create that own jewelry business that i did in bali and who do you then talk with but i promise you it will go quickly because when you travel you already have that if you travel you already have that in common with the people that is in the plane so you will quickly find new friends so don't want to worry about that but you have to learn to be in no man's land and be alone with yourself with your fabulous self and you have to learn to love yourself because you're going to be with yourself you're going to die by yourself you're born by yourself you're going to die alone and you have to learn to live with yourself alone so you can be in the woods somewhere completely alone with yourself with your own mind that's the biggest lessons in life um yeah so i just want to throw that in there because uh, that is a big thing that can put us back to to our old life that we don't want to live is because we want to be with our parents or we want to be like our by our parents or by our old friends and peer group um not to say that you're not going to be friends with them anymore when when you come back you of course will be with one some of them and also if you if you have a loving family they will always have to love and love you for who you are and who you become and who you truly are inside oh but yeah talking about that it's going to be a lot of boundary setting and letting them know who you are so you don't fall into the old patterns of being who you used to be and it's something I'm still working on as well, right? When as soon as I come home to Denmark with my parents and I become this person I don't recognize anymore. And how, how, can we, um, how can we always be true to ourselves in these situations and set boundaries? And yeah, even when I then came back home, and I don't drink anymore <laughs> at all. It, like maybe once a year or something like that. And you used to, and the people who was from back then are still drinking, right? And saying no to alcohol is like such a, what is wrong with that? I want to put that to the table. Why is it so hard for people to accept if you don't drink? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. So, yeah. Back to the mission that always has been the sign. I, like I said, I became a jewelry designer when I lived in Bali. I had my own jewelry company for 10 years and it was the jewelry was all all always all, the jewelry was about staying true to yourself and then set goals for the life you want to live and then go after it that was the message of my jewelry and i i miss it i'm probably gonna start creating jewelry again soon um yeah and then later on became a happy happiness and life coach health coach and i also took uh, education as a yoga teacher and a menstrual cycle awareness Uh, menstrual cycle awareness um yeah teacher preacher i don't know because i think that is i do think menstrual cycle awareness is the north star to your health so anyways i think I'm coming to the questions I always ask my people at the end of my, my podcast and this tell me something so the question is tell me something that is true for you that almost nobody else agrees with you on and I already touched on that and it's you have to take responsibility for your own life it was the hardest lesson I had to learn and I want to give it to you because it's the truth at one point, when you're old enough to wipe your own butt, I almost wanted to say, when you're old enough and you moved out of your parents' homes. No, no, that's not a good one because some, some people are living there until they're 35. 
No, when I let's just say when you're 18, you have to start taking responsibility for your own life and know that you are not step out of the victim mode. You can't blame your part. You can't blame your partner for your shit. You can't blame your parents for your shit. Not any longer, but you can heal. And you are responsible for healing, so you don't bring your, so you don't bring your trauma to other people or into the next relationship, right? You have to work on yourself. We have to just break the patterns, what we learned that doesn't serve us, and come back to the most true version of ourselves and learn what does that mean. And that doesn't again doesn't mean that you have to do this all alone. You need people to help you you need people out there to mirror you so you understand yourself better and sometimes it can be quite bitter the medicine you have to take to understand yourself Um, but it's a beautiful journey and i think you will get stronger off it and as i always said i don't regret regret anything in my life i would also even not the accident or anything like that because i had a whole blame thing going on there as well it's like oh no, I did this one. I don't know if you can recognize this. I did this. Or if I only didn't have break broken up with my boyfriend. Or if I didn't buy the tickets that night. This would never have happened to me. And you can't say that. Because we can't go back in the past and delete stuff. We don't have that machine yet. So there's no way of just saying. that It doesn't exist. You can't say it. If I was just not taking that train that day. Uh, If I didn't buy those pants, I would never have run into that person or whatever. I can't say it because past is the past. There's nothing you can do about it. You can always... Oh, that's a whole new story. You can always travel back in your mind and perceive whatever happened to you differently. Like the accident. Of course, it was horrible. It was a shit situation. But what was my taking on it like what did i learn from it right what what came out of it what positively things can i take into my life what did i learn so it doesn't just become a horrible accident but so also actually a life lesson anyways if so the next one if you could have your own billboard what would the what message would be on it come back to nature come tune into nature reconnect with nature by reconnecting with the rhythms of nature you start understanding yourself slow down listen become aware of the voice inside of you that calls your name and wants your attention so you can truly open up to her and listen to the voice and live the life you want to it's gonna be a big billboard though (laughs) If I could leave behind three truths, what would they be? Always be honest. I grew up in a a home where I was lied to a lot. And I actually just recognized that many years later. And I think that's why Uncomfortably Honest is the name of my podcast. Because I hate being lied to. Don't lie to your partner. Don't lie to your friends. Be honest with yourself. It's the most important thing. Be honest with yourself. Um, and then it's much easier to live because you don't have to remember your lies. So become more authentic. And it's a, oh, it's a lesson I have to learn. And it's, it's, I'm trying my best every day to stay true to myself and my feelings. And feeling what's happening inside of myself when I go against myself. Follow your curiosity is one truth. Really follow it. it really follow it if you don't feel like you have like one passion if you have one passion follow that but otherwise make your life the most exciting you can do because we are just here once and enjoy yourself become your own best friend yeah so i think i'm gonna wrap up this solo podcast for today i hope you enjoyed it and i want to let you know also because this is where my curiosity is at the moment is menstrual cycle awareness and so if you are suffering from pms or menstrual pain which which i did for years and there's an explanation and there's a solution for that because we don't actually have to suffer just because we have a womb and so if you want to 
learn about more also just live in sync with uh, the four seasons four inner seasons of your menstrual cycle i have a course coming up in april and you can join it's live and i will link it down below so this is definitely for women who are curious about that but also curious also um, not just curious but also just want to be done with the menstrual pain every month and the 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 mood swings the yeah you name it you know what i mean when i'm saying that and just understanding how you can it can become your superpower instead of dreading your menstrual cycle every month right so yeah so put that down below and otherwise i will you know if you can find all my information in the description it will also help me a lot if you like this video and give me a comment down below what you think about it and otherwise see you next time on the uncomfortably honest podcast love you very much out there stay true to yourself arrivederci bye